Hi and welcome to this section of the Physics 2 Tutor and in this section we're going to switch gears a little bit from what we talked about in the last section which was thermal expansion and contraction of solids and liquids and we're going to move into what's called the kinetic theory of gases and it has direct relevance for lots of reasons that you'll see as we move on into the course but basically what the gist of this section is is looking at gases at the molecular level of the, the molecules actually bouncing around in there and trying to understand how the pressure of that gas and the volume and the temperature and the number of uh, molecules present, how they're all interrelated. That is really, in a nutshell, what the kinetic theory of gases is. Now, if you've studied chemistry before, even at the high school level, you've probably been in, uh, uh, introduced to at least some of this stuff. And you'll see uh, you know, some of the equations that we'll look at will look kind of familiar from your high school chemistry or high school physics. But we're going to move beyond those initial equations into the actual kinetic theory part of it and we'll start talking about the energy level of the molecules individually. And it's going to be really useful and really cool and it's going to allow us to calculate some pretty neat things with regards to gases. So rather than talk about it all day, I want to jump right into it. We're going to start by talking about a couple of, of really interesting experimental facts that were actually just measured way back in the early uh, centuries ago, you know, when they started doing experiments with gases, they just measured a few things and found some really interesting things. And then we're going to go into the math uh, describing how all the temperature and pressure and the volume and so on are actually uh, interrelated. So let's go on and talk about what I'm going to call fact number one. Um, and what that is is the following equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. Now, think about this for a second. What we're saying is two completely different gases. You might have oxygen and then you might have helium. Where they have different molecular masses at the atomic level down there and at the molecular level they actually w uh, have different amounts of masses down there at that level but if you look at it and experimentally look at two equal volumes of those two different gases and put them at the same temperature and the same pressure they will contain the same number of molecules I'm not gonna uh, try to try to explain or even go into any detail why this is the case this is just an experimental fact it would be like fact the grass is green and then you would go off and try to understand why the grass is green and really go and look at it. This is sort of the same thing. This is an experiment that people performed a long time ago that started us down the road to understanding what, what gases are really all about. So this is a fact and it's a pretty cool and important fact and it's actually not a fact that I probably would have predicted ahead of time uh, if I lived way back then. Fact number two, one mole, we'll talk about what a mole is in a second, quantity of any gas at what's called STP. You might remember this from chemistry one, which means zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. That's what standard temperature and pressure means. Have the same number of molecules. So these are these are basically uh, similar, similar facts and these were experimentally measured a long time ago. And really what this is saying is that if you look at a mole, and we're going to talk about what a mole is in a second from chemistry, you might remember a mole is a specific number of molecules. One mole quantity of any gas at standard temperature and pressure has the same number of molecules. What this fact number two is saying is that the mole, the quantity mole that you may have heard about from chemistry one, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we're going to write it down and talk about it in a minute, but I know you probably remember that, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that's what one mole is. What it's saying is it's a very special number, and that's why the mole has become so useful through chemistry and through physics, because of things like this. If you measure one mole of a, of a gas at a standard temperature and pressure, they have the same number of molecules. So that's what that's basically saying. So there are certain attributes of different gases, even though they have different masses at the molecular level, that macroscopically behave the same. And that's what these two facts are saying. I'm not going to belabor these points anymore. I just wanted to open the section and show you that, first of all, a lot of the things that we learn about start by measuring experimentally uh, some things. And then we go down into the, 
into the weeds as far as trying to understand the math behind it and, and build a theory. Okay, let's refresh our memory. One mole of a substance is, we're going to abbreviate it N sub A, the A means Avogadro's number, and that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And what this is really saying is like molecules per mole. What this is saying is that one mole of a substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now actually it doesn't have to be a molecule. Water is a molecule, so if you had a, a mole of water vapor it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. If it were, um, let's say, uh, uh, helium, okay, an atom of helium, that's not a molecule, it's just an atom, same thing. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Uh, per mole. So whether you're talking about atoms, which are just individual little atoms, or molecules, which are more than one atom 